All right, everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know, as I've said in my last couple of videos, I'm not very well, man. I'm sick. I'm ill. I have got, like, some head cold. It's gnarly. I've been sort of making videos through it. I did want to have a day off today and just lay in bed, but it's official, man. Chelsea have come out. Ajax have come out. The deal is done. Hakim Ziyech will be a blue next summer. And you know what, man? It cost a few million more pounds, like two or three million more than Danny Drinkwater, or how much it cost Chelsea to buy Danny Drinkwater. And since then, the market has inflated and gone crazy. He is being sold to Chelsea for a much lesser price than De Ligt and De Jong, even though he's an attacking player, arguably their best, well, probably their best attacking creative player. And the, in his prime, 26 years old, it's just incredible business. Like, it is incredible business. So I have to make a video and talk about it today. It's just, I've just got to, I've just got to push through the illness, make the content for you guys. And the other reason I'm making this video today is because we've done it. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we've toppled the 40K mark. Over 40,000 subscribers. Just superb and joyous scenes here on Football Therapy. So I want to take a moment to thank every single one of you who supported my channel and the content since I made it essentially beginning at the beginning of the season. Really, really pleased. Super humbled. I'm, you know, I'm going to keep plugging on, making content all the time as long as you guys enjoy it. So thank you very much from me to you. So before I talk about ZH today, quick reminder as per usual to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, please do sub, hit that bell notifications icon, it is important. Like the video, why not follow me on Instagram too because I do Instagram lives to chat to you lot. All right, let's get into it. So it was only like a couple of days ago when Dutch publications, news outlets were talking about this deal, or even before that, a deal potentially being talked about in principle for next summer, but things went from zero to 100 real quick in the space of two days, and then Chelsea and Ajax both announcing it today. It is peculiar how Ziyech didn't get sold over the last couple of years. He's such an amazing player in his prime. You know, Barcelona coming in for Frankie de Jong. I know they want like the Iniesta replacement. Um, Juventus going in for De Ligt. Obviously, they're like a proper massive team that are synonymous with good centre backs. So it all kind of made sense. You could argue neither of them are having a great time of it at the moment for different reasons. But Zs to Chelsea is absolutely huge. Not only does he post incredible numbers, he's a left footer. He's played at the highest level at the Champions League. The last two Champions League campaigns, he's performed very, very well indeed. And somehow, Marina Granovskaya has pulled off an absolute banger and getting him for like, what is it, 38 million pounds? It's just blowing my mind, man. In 2020, to get that kind of caliber of player in terms of the numbers he's posting, superb. Like, if you looked at Bruno Fernandes and Hakim Ziyech in terms of their both being really sort of influential, positive, forward-thinking players. If you ask me who would cost more, say, a few months ago, I'd say, well, it's going to be Ziyech because he's a forward, he creates as well, like Bruno Fernandes, and he's a dead ball specialist, can score free kicks. Um, it will be Ziyech, but no, it's, he's nearly half as much as Bruno Fernandes. If they got Fernandes for like 60 million or something, whatever. Point being, I want to reiterate, the business is absolutely incredible from Chelsea. Now, I'm not going to talk about the implications of him playing for Chelsea, whether that means Chelsea won't sign Sancho or do you know what I mean? All this kind of stuff. If you want to get my opinion on that, go watch my previous two videos where I do talk about this, what it would mean if we got Ziyech. So my opinion still stands with all of that. I just want to talk about Hakim as a signing for this video moving forward. So Chelsea did announce, of course, today on their website with an article that Ziyech will be joining the Blues next summer. And they finished off with this like quote towards the end of the statistics. In a ranking of the top eight European domestic leagues since the 17-18 season, so what's that, last two years, two years plus maybe? And remember, this isn't top five, it's top eight, so perhaps easier leagues to be creative and post assists in as well. Eight leagues is a superb sample size. Ziyech is first for assists and chances created and third for shots taken. So third for shots taken for a number 10 winger is superb. But to be first for assists, league assists, and league chances created 
in a world of absolute superstars. That is insane. Like, okay, you could say, right, he's playing in the Eredivisie. It's not the same quality as, say, La Liga or Premier League. All absolutely true. But he's still posting those numbers in his relevant league. Obviously, there's good players playing in weaker leagues. And the fact of the matter is, he's, he's been superb in the Champions League as well. He's demonstrated his ability on the biggest stage and, you know, amongst the biggest talent and competition. Ziyech is in his prime as well. It's very much a signing for now at an amazing value price, essentially. But the last six consecutive seasons, he's posted over double figures for assists for the last six years. His consistency is mad, he's got an eye for a pass, and although he might have to try and develop in the Premier League a little bit, more on that in a second, I think it's just undeniable quality at an undeniably amazing price. So, how is this game going to develop? Let's talk about it now. Right, Ziyech obviously is playing in the Eredivisie, and you see some of his superb goals. Obviously, the Premier League is very physical. Now, I'm not sure that's going to be an issue for him, but it's very, very high octane, the Premier League. The press is insane, and not only that, you're expected to press. It's really going to test his creative metal in the sense of he'll have to pay those creative passes as quick as possible because the opposition are going to be very, very high octane fit, and they will press you and close down the spaces and block the passing channels much, much quicker than what would happen in Holland in the Eredivisie. So he's going to need to adapt to that straight away. Another thing is Premier League wingers, provided he's playing on the wing, have to track back. Look at Willian being the sort of tested model for Frank Lampard, always tracking back and doing the defensive work. It's not just Willian and Chelsea, other teams of top teams, unless you're like someone like Manchester City who rest in possession and defend with possession, all wingers have to track back. So we have to see how he deals with that. Another interesting thing though, right, We've been calling out, crying out, screaming out for a left-footed attacker and man oh man does Hakim Ziyech have a sweet left foot. Really, he's exactly what Chelsea have been looking for in that sense. A super, super, super creative forward-thinking player with a sweet left foot and an eye for goal. But where is he going to play? Is he going to replace Willian? Well, say Willian goes out. Again, I'm not going to put my opinions on ins and outs in this video. Go watch the previous videos. But it would be superb to have him cutting in on his left foot on the right wing. But he played against Chelsea in the number 10 role and he's played in the number 10 a few times. Now, this is really interesting. Maybe Chelsea start Christian Pulisic on the left wing where he's been really good this season. Callum hudson Adoy on the right wing where he's combined incredibly well with Rhys James this season. And he plays Hakim Ziyech in the number 10 role at the expense of Mason Mount starting, who is a very good player and probably will be a big player for Chelsea moving forward, but of course is still very young and can probably play as a deputy to Ziyech. That way I think Chelsea are much, much better equipped to break down these low blocks, which they've struggled to do so much this season. And also playing him in that number 10 role would perhaps absolve him a little bit of having to track back on the flanks. I'm not saying Ziyech can't do defensive work, I'm just saying this kind of role might offer him the opportunity to do his best work. Obviously this would be in a 4-2-3-1 formation, perhaps it would be Jorginho and Kovacic or pick your two in the double pivot with Hakim Ziyech in front or if it is a 4-3-3 you can play him on the right wing. Either way he'll be a hugely influential player. Even if Chelsea don't get top targets in the summer like say Jadon Sancho, if they do have another striker rotating with Tammy Abraham, Pulisic on the left, Ziyech on the right, Callum hudson Doy on either and who knows maybe Jeremy Boga as well, that's pretty formidable especially if they're strengthening of over the rest of the pitch in different areas right just to reiterate how good he is i want to tell you just quickly what numbers he's been posting recently uh, this season bearing in mind we're just kind of two thirds through the season he has 18 goal contributions in 18 appearances in scintillating form four of the ma four man of the match awards with an 8.38 rating on who scored 18 contributions and 18 appearances is all you really need to know there Last season and 29 appearances in the Eredivisie, he got 16 goals 
and 13 assists. Again, that's, tw well, that's 29. Yeah, again, that's 29 goal contributions and 29 appearances. That is absolutely mad. Um, he's got six goal contributions in the Champions League this season. <laughs> six last season. The continuity here is insane. No, okay, get this. Nine Man of the Match awards two seasons ago. Eleven Man of the Match awards last season. In terms of that Ajax side that are really, really good and creative, Ziyech is the one that's shining, the shining light. Sure, they had a good, you know, bright captain in Delix, but for me, the guy that's sort of really busting out all the creativity, scoring goals and assists, is the edge. Anyway, I'm sort of going to go around in circles here. It's an amazing signing at an amazing price. He's not like a 21 year old. He's not like us buying uh, Christian Pulisic or say Jaden Sancho or seeing someone like Hudson Adoy come through. He's got an extra six plus years on those guys. That's good though. He's in his prime. He'll believe in himself. He'll believe in his ability. The next sort of four years of Hakim Ziyech could be top, top level stuff. So throughout the entirety of the contracts that he signs at Chelsea, you would imagine. The Blues are crying out for someone like that as well. It's all very well bringing in these youngsters. Even someone like Jaden Sancho, who seems to have proved himself at the top level, still a teenager. I know he's amazing, but you need, if Willian and Pedro are at the door, you need someone with a little bit more experience. And to be honest, again, he just seems like the perfect signing in many ways. I want to just highlight the positives here. But anyway, I want to get all your guys' opinions on this signing. What do you think? Are you buzzing like I am? Granted, I'm a little bit ill, so I'm not as bright as I'd usually be when I talk about this stuff. But his scoring record speaks for itself. But I want to get all your opinions on how do you think his ability and his performances will translate to English football and the Premier League? I mean, there's a relative... I don't want to say no risk, but it's because it's like, you know, still 35 plus million, but it's not like they've spent 72 million on Pepe. Like, to bring that comparison in, Pepe cost literally twice as much. He hadn't played in the Champions League. Um, he had that amazing one breakout season before, I think. I'm not sure the previous season, so I probably should check that. But Ziyech has been consistent for the last six years. The last two years, he's played at the highest level in the Champions League costs half the amount of Nicola Pepe. So uh, there's a bit of risk, but it's not as much risk as say buying Pepe was. But what do you think? Do you think you can play in the Premier League well? Get down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you have enjoyed this video today, guys, sorry I'm not as bright as usual. Please do like the video, that means a lot. Remember to subscribe, we're just on the train to 50k now, man, and it's dope. Please do subscribe. Remember you can follow me on social media, at football yannick on both instagram and twitter that's it from me guys i'm gonna go lie down again you enjoy the football and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble i only love this paper sorry i don't I let me be